The path to the NFL draft continues, and we are now joined by Vikings general manager Kwesi Adolfo Mensa. And Kwesi, it, it, it sounds crazy for me to say this, but we are less than two weeks away from the start of the 2023 NFL draft. Being the front office facilitator for this Minnesota Vikings team, how would you assess where you guys are in your evaluation process? Yeah, we're, we're kind of finishing, tying up the loose ends right now. Uh, this process, for people who don't know, this process starts a long time ago. Last year, people are putting in summer grades. Our guys are on the road doing fall grades. And we have these systems in place where we kind of elevate all of the grades into this information place. And, and now we're just really talking through final fit, role, vision, any late information you've got from a pro day, maybe something like that. And then you get to step back and look at the whole big picture together because that's really, really starts to come together. It's not the individual players. It's all the pieces on the board and and what you think you can accomplish to help better your team, not just for this year, but for years in the future. Yeah, I know that process starts uh, way before today, but there are three major opportunities to get in-person evaluations done. You got the NFL Combine, College Pro Days, and then Top 30 Visits. The first two I just named, uh, Combine Pro Days, like that kind of is what it is. Like everybody's going to be there. But that top 30 visit, that's a very select group. Yeah. How do you prioritize that select group? Yeah, it's it's a lot. Of, it's just a lot of different things. I think there are certain times, uh, you know, maybe a player didn't come to the combine. You didn't get a chance to speak to him there. Uh, or somebody else you just have another question about that you want to really just talk through. Uh, it's one of my favorite processes, though. Uh, you know, I think people use it a lot of times as an evaluation thing. Mm -hmm. To me, it's just getting to learn who that person is and mm -hmm. what comprises their personality and what it's going to be like sharing the hallways with them. Uh, you're always, you know, as you get older, I think there's this tendency to think that the, you know, the next generation isn't, I just, I'm always so fired up about the people I meet and how passionate they are and, and that the game's going to be in good hands. Yeah, last year's top 30 visit was was very intriguing to me. And uh, as Sezio Tomawa, the conversation you two guys had was like eye-opening for me because the conversation was more so about music mm -hmm. and what music motivated him to be a better person but also a better football player. So for you, what role does music play in the evaluation process? Yeah, I think it's the things you connect with say a lot about who you are. Yeah. Um, and watching somebody... Uh, connect with music is its all own learning yeah. process, right? Because you see some, it kind of move through somebody's soul and and really just see what makes them passionate. Uh, we had somebody in Top 30 yesterday, uh, last year, sorry, talking about a song they loved and it reminded them about the time they spent with their family and they started yeah. crying, right? And so you know immediately that this person just values family and, yeah. and cares about people and yeah, forget about what that player does in the field. I, I know who they are as a person. So I, I love connecting with people on those things. And I, I always tell them there is, it's one of those beautiful questions. There's no right or wrong answer. Mm -hmm. I just want to know what impacts you. And it's not, I'm, I don't want you to say the same song I would say or whatever. I just want to say something that's genuine to yourself. Yeah, there, there was a wise poet that once said, uh, now, I move with the, now I move with aggression, use my mind as a weapon, because chances aren't given, they're took in a, like interceptions. <laughs> you know a lot of those guys that are going to be getting interceptions this no year are going to be defensive backs. No question. So how do you assess the defensive back group in the NFL draft this year? I love it. That's a great, that's a great bar. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think they're a great group of real, a, a lot of depth, just a lot of good players. Um, you know, I think a lot of times with those positions where it's just kind of what's your flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, me personally, I just try and appreciate what they do, what situations will they be best at, and then how does that fit with it within our scheme. But there's a lot of talented players in the, in the draft that, you know, could be there at any pick that you take, legitimately any pick that you, you have. And even in CFA, there's some guys that yeah. you know, might not get drafted that you're pretty excited about. So as a general manager, you always love options. I, I won't lie and say the, that I don't. Um, so we're excited about the group that's in the draft. The, the, re the reason why I love this interview a lot is because before I was before I sat down with you, I'm just looking at all these different mock draft boards. There's what 20, 30,000 Vikings mock draft boards. And I'm like, well, this guy ultimately makes a decision. So from a big picture perspective, I know the, the, the thought process is like, oh, options are great. But how do you narrow down that, I guess, hypothetical process or outs for outs, like you usually sure, say when it sure. comes to draft day. Yeah, we do a lot of work uh, on the front end. It's just like anything else you do, practice. You want to practice harder than the game. So I, I stress the group, and I, I will say that although technically I make the decision, I think we make decisions mm -hmm. together. I think I combine information, and I want the group to move together because how, how do draft picks succeed? Everybody in the building 
feels great about it. So we can overcome the variance of day to day because we all believe in the player. We all talked about it. And so we make these decisions together, but we, we do a lot of stress testing and just, hey, you know, it's my, kind of my favorite thing. Everybody knows when I'm kind of in my, my question bag and I'll be <laughs> like, would you rather? And I start doing all these things and yeah. I make them think like general managers. And it's great because we all need to understand why these decisions take place. And I think that's been one of the great parts about our process. Mm. Would you rather sounds like a game that shouldn't be played in a, in a draft. <laughs> 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 but I want to I want to talk about your draft philosophy. How, what, what is your philosophy on best player available versus need? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't necessarily think, I know this gets said a lot. Yeah. I will say this, you wanna be in a position as an organization that you don't have to draft for need. Gotcha. Having to do anything, you know, in football, the draft and life is, is never where you're gonna have your best leverage. Mm -hmm. uh, so you wanna make sure you're one of those great scouting organizations that have players in place on your roster that other people don't know about, that you, you see a lot of great ambition in and, and potential in. Uh, so, you know, I, you wanna be in a place where you can ultimately make the, the best decision, the most optimal decision, and sometimes, that's taking a player that's really good and, and you have a need in, or that's potentially trading up to get a generational player or trading back to get impact from multiple positions. So you just wanna be in a position where you can do anything. Getting boxed into a corner is just something you're always gonna try and avoid. And that starts with dedicated evaluation from your scouts, your organization, and then really just having an open mind to what players can do and, and also really believing and understanding what's on your roster. That's so critical is knowing what's on your roster and not always thinking the answer has to come from the outside. It's really staring at your player development and, and, the, and, the, and the, you know, the skills that your players have and really going from there. Have you started to get a feel of what you want the draft night room to be like, the vibe? Is it, you know, uh, <laughs> scented candles? Or, <laughs> uh, like, what, what, what do you want your vibe to be like this year? This is year two for you, so uh, you, you kind of got an idea of what to expect as far as, like, energy. Yeah. You know, I'm a man of the people. Okay. I, I, okay. I want a room that everybody else feels great in. That's part of my job is okay. to make everybody else feel heard. And, and it's an interesting dynamic because it's almost like, an, I, I, growing up for me at least, watching other people play video games was like a bad thing. Like it was the worst. Mm -hmm. You know, watch it. now people like millions of people show up and watch people play video games. It's like, yeah. so people watch me like think, which is kind of a weird dynamic because I'm just kind of trying to be in my own thoughts yeah. and maybe I'll have a question here or there. But it's an interesting dynamic in that in that sense. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, I just want a, a building where people are fired up for the new Vikings, that they're going to meet the standard of the people that have come before us. Uh, Fired up because it's also just a great day for a lot of kids, mm -hmm. right? That's that's the thing I always try and impress upon the group. Like a lot of people are fulfilling their dreams. That's the one thing you talk about at Top Thirty. That's so cool. They're just they're just like you know they're they're a college senior or junior yeah. going to their next job. It, the job happens to be the NFL, it's true. But it's they're going to the next job and there's butterflies. They're asking you questions. Hey, Quace, how can I be my best, the best player in the NFL? Mm -hmm. That's a really cool dynamic, and I just want to be in a room full of people who appreciate that. You just use the word dream chasers. I know that was the mantra for last year. And I know during top 30 visits, you ask every player, if you had one song yeah. that could define you, yeah. what would that song be? So yeah. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Yeah. If you had one song to define what you want draft night to be just for yourself, yeah. what would that song be and why? You know, I think, you know, I don't wanna talk about the song that I would, you know, just normally say. I would okay. say a song, uh, Ambition. You know, it's a great song and we've talked about it in the past. Because uh, for now we're in year two, this is the new part of this. You know, we're, we're taking the next step in, in whatever we are trying to be, and our ambition is high. Our ambition is the grand ambition, and so you know that song speaks to me um, because at the end of the day, on draft day, you sometimes have to make decisions that aren't conventional or aren't this. And but you know that the hook just kind of rings in my ear. They gonna love me for my, my ambition, ambition yep. right? And you know. I don't know any other way than to define what we need to be to win championships and swing everything in our power to get there. I, I, I don't know a different way. Uh, so those words will kind of ring in my head on draft day. Uh, yeah, ambition.